Okay, I'm stoked. I got my uh, car all fueled up, ready to go. I've got an hour and 20 minute drive ahead of me. I'm starting out a little bit late. It's just at 7 a.m. I'll be there just before 8.30, and I really wanted to be there uh, between 7 and 7.30, but... We're going to do some discovering, and Sasco, like I said, it's pretty cool. I don't think it's been um, uncovered 100 years. I want to get more of that foundation out there to have it shown. I think that's going to be um, really cool, especially for some of these guys that wrote these papers. They only see that one little piece of uh, foundation. Hey, I want to I want to uncover some more, so let's go check it out. And by the way, just to give you a timeline, today is uh, the 8th of uh, May on a Friday, relatively busy. I'm here at the QT gas station, and man, uh, the traffic is busy. But this is phase two of the opening phase of the uh, Wuhan virus. We'll see what happens, but I'm thinking this is pretty cool. So a lot more busy traffic. We'll somewhat get back to norm, but unfortunately, not completely. All right, let's take a drive. Looks like they were trying to recreate what these bins were, which was an, an A divider, which it would pour on each side over there. And I'm seeing as they built these walls, two brick lengths deep, that's some morons, came over here and decided to wreak havoc on it. And these are the people of why they have no trespassing signs. Although I'm not here to destroy or touch anything, I'm just documenting. It just, it's just atrocious that morons, yeah, that's just another word for animals, would, would come in here and decide to uh, destroy this. You can see that they're making some attempt to hide in the graffiti, and... Getting back to how this used to look, which was a wall in the middle and dividers train cars there'd be one on this side going all the way down and then there'd be one on the other side as well going all the way down these holes at the very end here were designed to pick up the excess because the trains were a little bit too long 
Now that's not a factoid, I'm just guessing. I don't know what they're doing here or what their plan was. It's like a Doom kind of a video game setup here with, oh yeah, this is, I know what this is. Okay, they must have set this up for um, paintballs for shooting, that's my guess, because I am seeing some white stains here that would indicate some paintball up on the sides here. So I'm guessing that they were doing this for a uh, paintball, which would be kind of cool, especially at nighttime if you had uh, maybe some lights here and there. And they got these numbered too, which is new as well. That's brand new paint. Here you can see the structure for the wall in the middle where they had the mounts. And they would just build this up and typically this would have been just wood on top. And then a metal going across again for the uh, to catch the excess. Really built up here. This has got to be the ore that was left over that's just hardened over the years. Keep in mind, this has been sitting here for 100 years. So I can see how this can get really um, clogged up, especially the back area over here. But yeah, that's what was dumped out and left. It's been carved out over the years, but for the most part. And then you got the little cave back here, which I showed before in the video, which is designed to go all the way back. And again, you get those morons, those animals that come out here. And this right here is for the train at top, for it to back into. We'll uh, climb up there, see what's going on. As a matter of fact, I think we'll just climb on this. It should be pretty sturdy. Yep, sure it is. There we go, just, just like a regular ladder. Easier way to get up. Thank you very much. All right, cool. So, yeah, this definitely, this stuff has been just sitting there over the years. Just interesting. Okay, a lot of flies and little desert bees up here. Not like regular bees, or like smaller bees. Here, the train would uh, come out, and then it would back up into this, in order to get back up onto the tracks that are up there. So, this is definitely a backing up point. You can see how it slopes up, and then it comes down here. There's a lot of switching stations on here, a lot. So, this is definitely a backing up point. You can see how it slopes up, and then it comes down here. There's a lot of switching stations on here, a lot. As we slowly go up. This was the station right here. This, like the weigh station or the check station when they came through. They would weigh the train. The train would be coming right through here. Yeah, it lines up perfectly. You, you can see here how that's all set up. And it lines up perfectly with this trail going out there where the trains would come in. That's interesting. Uh, this might have even been a scale. This is a huge piece of concrete here. I would imagine it is, because I believe the sunken area here is for a, um, a counterweight. If I had to give it my best guess, I would say this was definitely the weigh area, and that was the counterweight that brought it in. So I'll have to do some Google search and bring up a 1920s kind of train or weigh station, just get an idea. But I am looking at the foundation here, so when I recreate it, I can get a really good idea of how this looks. And it's right in line, just to the right of the uh, foundation in the back for the railroad tracks. Use of rocks out here, which I think is fantastic. Instead of using a lot of cement, they repurposed that, which is cool. And then, so you got a rock foundation, and these are, yeah, these are steps right here to step down into it. I mean, they used to be steps. This is cracked over the years and stuff right here, as you can see. But yeah, this would be steps to go down in here to work on the weight or whatever the case may be. So that's kind of cool. Never saw that before, and that's new. Let's go back up the uh, makeshift stairs. Like, there's one, there's two, and then there's like a the step out of there. So it's kind of just steps are built in. To the rock they had. This is in line right here with this tree, but those are still to the right over here. Obviously, a foundation down here from what I'm seeing. Yeah, as you can see right here, you got the uh, foundation coming out all the way through here for the supports, which is really cool. Here I'm standing right where the <coughs> switching station should be. It should be right here, because this separates. One goes in that direction over there, and the other one, this is the one coming coming back. And then the train would follow all the way up in here. And then whatever side the locomotive was on, they would then just go ahead and switch the tracks so it can go to the uh, unloading track. So 
delivery track up here and then reverse it and switch it over to the unloading track where those big uh, ore bin catchers that were at that were vandalized by morons. I'm still walking this trail. You can see here they had to even cut through some rock over here in order to make this even longer. And looking back, I mean, it's quite a distance that I've uh, walked here. I'd say this is about maybe a quarter mile of a leeway track in order for the train to back up into either when leaving or entering. Either way, you would have to utilize this to back up. There's just not enough room up here to have a wide enough track for it to go for a U-turn. It's not going to happen. So they just run track and they back it up. Back up all the way over here. And we're getting to the end. It's pretty cool. I even have a nice view up here. And you can see where it's built up just to get the train enough room to get up here. I don't think anybody's really explored this far out. So... At least I haven't seen on any videos. And let's take a look at this. And that would be the end of the tracks. Better utilized for trucks now. And yeah, I was right. We had a great view out here of the Arizona desert. And it kind of gives you an idea of how desolate it can be. Let's go check out those slag dumps. I'm going to take this trail down here. Take a look at those slag dumps. They are huge. This is molten slag, which is molten rock, stripped of the uh, gold, copper, all the um, valuable metals. Everything else was just left in. But you can see the swirling marks and how this cooled down. Okay, just almost like a lava rock. It's very similar, in fact. But if you take this, I have no idea how it got all the way out here from over there, which is the major slag dump. We'll be up there in just a moment to take, take a look at it. Um, but that's a huge mountain of uh, slag. I haven't seen this before. I saw it from the distance and took a picture of it. I had no idea what it is. It's a plain fuselage. Looks like maybe out of a C-130. It's definitely a transport. Right, so I'm going to climb on top of the Slag Mountain. Six Slags Mountain. Yeah, went there. Love the roller coaster. Okay, so we're going to go up here and check this out. And again, lots of shells out here, guys. Lots of just gun shooting. Just all kinds of... Um, too bad. I would really love for someone just to kind of fix this place up and make it into something really cool. That's amazing. Layers and layers and layers of slag just dumped over and over. And I've got pictures of this, which you've probably already seen, but that would be red hot lava coming down there. And that is in freaking tense. All right, let's go uh, get on top of this bad boy and see if we can see the track, uh, rail, railroad track trail. Just to give you an idea of the climbing. Very loose rock. It's almost like walking on shale. It almost has the same kind of sound to it. But I'm going up through here. Love these structures. Love these formations. It's like being in Hawaii. Walking through um, lava. Because, quite frankly, that's exactly what this is. Melted rock and then dumped. Hell, you could probably even use this as a location for Hawaii. Given all this out here. All right. Going up the rock. And I'm getting to what I think is going to be the trail for the train. There. Ooh. There. Yep. It's kind of hard to say. It's really hard to say where this ended and where this started. I am seeing a trail up there, but I'm not seeing a second part of but a little bit further out from the works. Let's go back here a little bit. This might have been a dump and then they just reversed gears and went back. Let's get an idea of the panorama here. And again, here you can just see the flow of slag, the impressions. And keep in mind, this impression you're seeing right here, yeah, that was left about 100, it was shut down about 1910. So about 110 years ago, uh, this has been sitting here. And it hasn't really changed in 110 years. It's still pretty much the same wrinkles. I think that's pretty cool. Of course, you get the natural deterioration, rains, everything else, but that's just extremely hard. Then you get into the frail pieces, very similar to uh, a volcano. This is going to be very similar. And this can be, I believe, I've looked seen it online, that this can be recycled. There's a ton of slag in this world that would love to be recycled. So just keep that in mind. I just saw that. And if it could be recycled, it'll probably sit on a, for lack of better words, a gold mine here. There's plenty of it. Look at this, how this got upturned. This whole area, this whole thing here is getting ready to collapse. And it looks like it's pushing inwards for whatever reason. So it looks like the bottom side is starting to deteriorate, starting right about here. Okay. And going, yeah, you can see where it slopes down right up in here as well. This is, again, let me cross this area. 
that's a that's a good slope down right there that's really sticking up and here's part of the fault right here yeah, for lack of better words this is the um, cause of it where this is literally separating from the earth itself now we have to imagine probably because of the weight and the rain and this has happened over the course of 100 years keep that in mind 100 years it's not going to drop any time today i'm perfectly safe yeah. not going to happen okay and yeah, that's pretty cool there and yeah so these are definitely the tracks and the slag just continues all the way around and again it's it's just a mountain of slag all the way through this kind of dips off a bit that's ready to fall off with a little bit extra weight so i'm not going to step on that Man, if that's not Martian-like, I don't know what is. That is domed. Domed um, slag. <laughs> Here's another one over here, I guess, when it bubbled up. You just maintain this type of uh, domed slag thing here. That's just crazy. That's just insane. There's lots of these around here, too. Never seen that before. It's like a tortoise shell. It's cool. So here's the chimney. Here's the wall that I believe has more of it behind it. Here's bricks, by the way from the chimney when it collapsed. I was always wondering what direction it collapsed in. But these are the bricks right here that was used to build uh, the uh, chimney, which was typical of the uh, 1800s. So you'll see a ton of these, not just here, but all over the place. It looks like it probably collapsed going in that direction toward that mountain there. So because the majority of the bricks are on the side over here, which would indicate they're falling toward this side. Yeah, they're just all over the place. You don't see them as much on the other side over here. But the reason why I say that this uh, dust settling area, which is this wall, there's more to it, is because you got the wall right up in here as well, which can still be dug down. And there was at one point a door in here as well, which still might be down there. And here you can see still part of the structure from it. So if you were to uncover this, you would definitely see more of the bricks out here. No doubt about it. So this can definitely be dug up. You can see the support post here. So that's, that's pretty cool. So it's not a complete loss. This is definitely in here to where this can be dug out and maybe some of this brick relayed. Kind of get an idea of how it used to look. Item here, and keep in mind, the railroad car used to come through here as well. And now you're seeing the uh, brick, part of the foundation here for the uh, dust settling house. And it continues all the way here to the end. This also had another door. Keep in mind, what I'm stepping on should be completely empty. It should look like a pool. But over here, again, is part of that wall. And that I didn't figure on as far as rock being there. And again, this, this might have just been rock in this area and nothing else, and the main area was there. But there was a door up in here that came through for train cars to come through. So this gully right here that you see, because right now I'm inside the dust settling chamber, and you can see where there was a, um, a cart or something that would come out here on this uh, flat ground. And that should be about the same over here. But this is a huge chamber. It had two connectors. I believe going into it. Those, those are in the pictures as well. But this collected a lot of dust. A lot. So with this being the uh, smeltering plant right here, and I'm going to get a good perspective. I'm going to stand right in front of the chimney, directly in front, and just span out. Okay, let's take a look at this. All right, that's the um, smeltering. Okay, right through here. Now, and behind it, it had uh, converters. Okay, so we did see those structures out there which I'll probably try to piece together on a map. But you definitely saw the converters out there as well. There were the mounts for them. Uh, let's see here. Over there, that's going to be the powerhouse. And right behind it is supposed to be the steam house. So let's go see if we can see any foundation left over from the steam house. Because right now, if it's there, it's covered by brush. Brush. It's covered by brush. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, this is definitely the door as we're walking away from the smeltering plant and we're walking toward the powerhouse. This is definitely the entrance. And we've already been down here. I just want to show it to you. I'm not going to go all the way through this again. But that was the entrance to whatever the works were that was going on below.
And then of course you had the machi machinery up here on top and being a powerhouse, uh, this was full of um, electricity. No, it was full of uh, machinery designed to put that power together and then send it over here to the uh, plant and everywhere else that needed it. Now in between the powerhouse and the, and the steam house, you should have a blank area for the train to roll through, which is right here, okay? And the steam house should be directly behind. There's a couple of mounts right here, by the way. Not too sure what those are for. Um, I'll try to line that up with a chimney. The steam house should be back here. Oh, I'm seeing some mounts. There we go. Yeah, this is the steam house right here. Pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, just to kind of give an idea of structure, I don't see any other supports out here. And these are relatively short supports. They almost line up with this wall right here, which is almost gone. I don't see any further structures out here that would lean its way toward... Oh, hold on a second, there's one over out here. A lot of rubble rock. This is from the area being torn down 100 years ago. Okay, there's a support beam right here, which would mean this structure went all the way across in the back here, as these would line up for the um, back foundations as well. But I found more back toward there. It's just hard to see all the shrubbery. I'll stick around and see what else I can find here. Okay, just to keep my bearings, there's one concrete slab here, and this comes to the back wall of the structure that sits right in the back of the power plant. And so this even might even be the converter area. There's another slab right there. And that one lines up with the end. So this supported a beam or a structure in order to go across and meet up with that. So we know that this area in here had a structure built on it. <clears throat> right in between there is where you're going to have the uh, railroad tracks here. And also through this alleyway here, you'd have railroad tracks. And again, they used rock from the area in order to build it. Yep, there it is. So not so much a full foundation as a rock foundation, but they use this in order to incorporate the building, which is real nice. That's cool. So now I'm walking inside the steam building. Here's a little bit of a foundation here. Found this. That right there, that's cool. And again, more of the foundation over here. And this is where it ended. And it looks like there was something in there. I can't tell exactly what it was. Now, over here, a road in between, and you should have the carpenter's house. And not the carpenter's house, but yeah, okay, right here. Right here is where we have it. And it's just in line with everything else on the road. This lines up perfectly, yep, so that's what this is. This is the blacksmith shop. And let's see how this, see how this looked. It's, uh, looks like this is an entrance. Coming down in here looks like a sitting area of some type. And you got these walls here. This is good. I didn't see this uh, described in another report as far as all these foundations, so this will definitely have to go in. This goes back a little bit. And you're gonna get the entrance right over there. And so that's the blacksmith shop. I believe the blacksmith shop. Then you got one shop also right behind it as well, which is the warehouse. Yeah. Here's the warehouse. Foundation for the warehouse right here. And, oh yeah, this is this is small, right up in here. I'm seeing a slight impression of a foundation right up in here. I don't know if you can see it, and then it looks like it goes over to here, comes across, and then comes back right here. So if I was to walk it, I'm walking the foundation. Yeah, right there, so I'm walking this. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, and it corners off over here, all right. So this, which sits directly behind this black, the blacksmith shop, I believe this was the um, warehouse. And it looks um, as if the warehouse probably had an underground area because these are designed to create a basement. And you can see the slots in here. These are designed for two by sixes to go through there. Matter of fact, the wood is still in there, if you can see it. I don't know if you can see that in there or not. Do I, do I have the camera? There we go. There's a two by sixes right in there, They're still there. So those will go in in order to create a platform. And this might not have even been a basement. This just might have been a subfloor area. And here's some bigger beams right up in here. And those are for like four by six, as it looks like. Yeah, we have the remnants of floor system that was off these uh, concrete pillars right up in here, which is really cool. And that's just about maybe, I'd estimate about 30, 10, 20, about 25 feet 
between the uh, shop up front and the shop behind here. And I'm um, looking over here. This was the only shop in the, in the back area. There were two on the front. We'll get to that in a second. I just noticed this over here, though. I want to take a look at it. Yeah, this is really something else. Uh, and again, I have a little bit of a foundation here, but these are just huge. Obviously, these are put here to hold something absolutely humongous. I mean, look at this. even ground into the uh, rock right here and left a little bit of an impression. This, whatever machine was here, was huge and served uh, a dramatic purpose here. I'll have to research that and see what building was sitting here because we still have some structures over here as well and one there as well, too. So I don't exactly know what part this building had in it, but just to get a closer view of that, an imprint of a foundation here. That would definitely be a foundation. There's the two bolts. So we have a foundation back here, and it goes all the way through here and corners out. But it corners out and continues. This is like a rounded area here. Almost looks like a parking spot. But yeah, that's rounded out. Lag bolts there to secure whatever was in there, which was my best guess, wooden framing or could even been steel framing. Down the other side of this and follow this down. This is crazy. Okay, so it corners out over here. Alrighty. And just for placement purposes, I'm right behind that wall that's sitting all the way at the top of the mountain there, which we'll be taking a look as well. Uh, and it goes through here. It looks like there might have been a door there. Let's go take a look at that. Yeah, I'm over here now. And it's pretty plain to see that this was an entrance, which again helps on my geography. And again, this is uh, facing or facing toward power station. And again, there's that landmark there as far as on the top of the hill. I don't know what that's for. Again, I'm going to go check that out. Uh, but yeah, so we have an entrance here or an exit. Comes through, <clears throat> corners out. And again, we have the studs for everything over here as far as it coming around. I just don't remember there being this big of a shop back here on the map, but we'll take a double look at it. And again, here's here's the wall. Okay, and here's another entrance right here. That's the uh, one I was telling you about, or exit. So this is a complete square building. It goes from here to here, but then it also extends over here with a wall and continues on through there where you're seeing the, the mounts. But is there a wall over here? Oh, there's another mounting structure right there by this bush. Okay. As I walk through here, as I walk through the belly, um, it looks like this. Nope, there's another uh, stake right there. So this continued on through, yeah, there we go, on through here. So this looks like it was a two unit structure. Let me try to weed my way through all this brush. Ah. Wow, almost out front. This is, it looks like a back structure. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah, and I'm not fully on the road yet. So that might be the back structure. So let me go look over here again. Again, going through some bushes just to get around. Oh, that's sticky, sticky, sticky. Okay, here we go. All right, and then here's also a continuation of part of that structure, it looks like. I'm, I'm guessing. I'm guessing because this one doesn't seem to go out very far. It's almost a trail through here. Then it goes here, and then you have this front area here and this back area. And I'm wondering, what was this for? Because it looks like a, it's in the shape of a T. Doesn't look like there's much else to it. No other structures. And yeah, that definitely had a void there in the corners. It does over on the side I'm standing on. Uh, but I just can't seem to figure out what the purpose of this was for. I'm thinking maybe storage. This looks like simply a storage unit area for uh, supplies or slash a warehouse. Then you have all these out here. So that's, again, a completely different structure. But it is in line with going through, the tracks going through, and right through there as well to the power plant. And then also the other set of tracks that would be out here going through there as well. So those tracks would come straight down. Oh, hang on. That might even be something set up for the tracks. Huh. That's exactly in line with where the tracks would come through. And this just might be for the, um, the railroad, maybe to, to weigh it on its way out. I don't know what's wrong with me on these. Words, but I'm going to go ahead and put that in there as well as a possibility. This might be a way station. Not too clear on the square that's here, but I'll put that on the map as well as being a foundation, and I'll try to find out what that was originally just for, because some structures were here, uh, when, when, or some structures were not here when certain pictures were taken and some were built later, so I don't know what that is, but... And correlation, right there, okay. These are retainer walls. We're going up to the very top where the water tower is at. I'm not going to go all the way up there, but I'm going to check out a couple of other areas, because I saw something on the map that had like a concrete grates that looked like it was holding for a water tower. So we'll see if we can find that. Well, <clears throat> I missed a lot coming up here last time because these are not retainer walls. They're functioning um, foundations. 
and I did not see this one before, maybe John did. But here's a building, oh yeah, now I remember. This is one that has that building where I have no idea what it was for. It's a huge rectangular building. This looks like a, maybe a runoff area. I can't tell unless it was dug out. Uh, so I really have no way of knowing. In the pictures, it's not very specific. It just looks like a lot of boards stacked up. I mean, I'm, I'm not really too sure what this was for unless there's an underground area and it just got buried. I don't know. What I do know is, oh, is that a hand, hand grenade? Yeah. Diversionary. Yeah, I'm not going to play around with that. I don't even know why that's here. And I don't even know if it's, I don't even think it's gone off. Now, maybe it's one of those smoke bombs or something. I don't know. If anybody knows, or someone's saying on the video, run, uh, then, then you probably know what it is. Otherwise, a little drain hole area there. So, man, maybe this was a water plant or something. I, I don't know. Let's take a look at that one up there. Everything works on gravity, by the way. The water tank was up there. This comes down. This comes down. And I'm thinking it has something to do with the water tank and maybe uh, storing water. That's my best guess. So let's go up there and we'll take a look at that. And that's where I'll be when I start the video back up. All right, given the depth that we have in here and given the depth that's down there, uh, I'm going to leave myself to believe that this was for, um, for water. I just can't think of any other reason why they would have it here like that. And again, you've got these pipes down here that would lead off to supply water. huge hole in here that was designed for a massive amount of water to come out and again this is my best guess I could be wrong but I don't think I am on this one for whatever reason over here a lot of rock was dug out it's a major empty area and another structure right over here this place is full of these little structures I'll get back to the water tank in a second but let's just take a look at this real quick looks like this is a uh, wall that surrounded it a generator of some type and there's two yeah it's over here here's a uh, two of these you can see the lag bolts in here there's one right there yeah the other one's right over here too you can see that right here that lag bolt right there okay so it was carrying a pretty good sized piece of equipment back here and you had this wall here to cover it and it sits right behind the chimney so if there's any photographs of it that'd be great it's a good shot of the chimney at the very top area and again that was all built up with bricks way up there you can imagine how high that was yeah so a little bit of a uh, wall here as well that was dug out this might have been dug out to use for the construction but my best guess is a lot of good rock here you can see this is angular rock meaning it's not round so it's really good for uh, stacking or however you need to work it out so these are great sturdy rocks for uh, construction and as you can see they last for a long time these structures have been here for over 100 years now unfortunately i've not found any existing photos of sasco after it was shut down I guess nobody bothered to go out there and take any photos or anything, but, but you know, this is a really cool party area too. I saw a little campfire there. Nice place to hang out. Great views. There's a, I don't know the name of that mountain, but I'm going to call it uh, Squash Mountain or Plateau Mountain. Squash Mountain or Flat Top. You can move Flat Top. Uh, yes, yeah, so this was all dug out. And again, coming directly from up there on the water tank. So I think these were gradually filled in by the water tank to have the um, a continuous water supply here because again you're in the desert <clears throat> water is not a commodity that comes uh easily so to build these and to catch them when it does rain or if it does come in is the best thing to do okay let's go take a look at the other structure that i saw over there that i saw on the uh, google maps okay we'll be right back okay here we go again, it's just right down the hill from that reservoir where i was just at and it's right over here and i believe i'm going to speculate that this was also another water tank which is what i think i saw online now this looks like either a walkthrough or a station. You know what? It has a slope to it, though. That's really weird. I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's, there's an obvious slope to the inside of this. And this is all level on top. This might have been round tank on top, all the way around here. And then the spout, or the drain spout, was right in the middle of the tank here. And they would set the drain. This has an automatic slope going down. We'll get a better angle of that over here. And there's a slope going down. And there'll probably be a drain coming out of the bottom. So you can see here it's shallow. As it goes down, it gets steeper. And that's not because of wind and stuff blowing back that's just a, an exit area so the water would drain from the bottom so they uplifted it and again working with gravity and you can see this is built with rock from the surrounding area uh, rock and mortar but again very impressed on how they're able to cut down costs by using surrounding items very nice let's uh, drive on out let's take a look at some of the exiting features how would you like to win a brand new car hey wow you never know what you're gonna find out in the desert man <clears throat> uh it's actually a lot of stuff is still good here and salvages easily. Sell these on eBay. Uh -huh. 
It's a Chevy Cavalier. Yeah. It's probably found its correct resting spot. Chevy Cavaliers and Malibus are just not the best cars, man. We had to uh, cut the tires off. This engine, man, has a lot of good parts on it. Maybe you can take this and sell this stuff on eBay and fling it up. Okay, let's go check out some other stuff here. Again, just odd stuff you find in the desert. Any desert, for that fact. Just happens to be here in Arizona. All right, just to get this proximity, I'm directly in line with the chimney as I'm facing it, driving in. There's the road right over there. I did not see this before either when I came out. And it's not hard to tell that this was a red brick, a red brick structure. Here's the foundation. Looking for the entrance. There's some foundation blocks out here. Could have served as maybe a porch or something. But there's definitely uh, something out here. Again, these um, baked oven bricks, very popular in the uh, 1800s. And it leads out to a foundation over here. Let's take a look at that. Again, let's mark these foundations. This is completely different from the uh, country store or the store and depot. I don't even know what this is. But we'll mark it out foundation-wise. Pipe coming out. And now sitting on top of what looks like it was designed to be nice. Again, another mount here. I don't know if the foundation continues over here. It does not. But it continues over there. And I think that's about it. I just see it continuing right there. Yeah, I'm just perplexed. I have not seen this one before, and I don't know what it is. Doesn't look like there's anything underneath. Looks like somebody, well, maybe there was. There was. Somebody certainly tried to get under there. And there is. I saw an area back there that's um, broken out. So it looks like there's an empty area down here that's covering it. Cool beans. All right. I'm still not clear on what the structure is next to the uh, store. <clears throat> I know this is the depot, but as far as how it was utilized, I don't know. Uh, this is a, a raised floor, and if you look over here by the foundation, there's a gully right here that goes through. Now, it's filled in right now, but it's a gully, and maybe it was used for washing something down. Maybe this was a, um, a wash depot or something. I don't know, but as you can see the drain, again, it continues to come around here, and it flows right into this area here which comes right out here into this pipe. So this was used for water. Otherwise, it wouldn't have that much drainage in it, I'm guessing. Then there was a vacant area here. Then you had the supports there and there for the store, which is in the picture. And this would have had a wooden ramp down here going onto that, of which he would wheel things up or down and then lift them out of there. For, um, so this obviously was a storage unit, without a doubt. Without a doubt. And of course, you had your support beams in there too, for uh, if you can see there. So it's been like this for over, again, I keep saying this, but over, the, over this for 100 years. Okay, folks, that about wraps it up. I'm out of here. I didn't find a jail. I have no idea where that's at. I'll leave it to the other video guys to show that. But I'm thirsty, man. All right, let's rock and roll. Ah, versus. Am I in there? No. Yeah, well, that's jacked up. I tripped. So I'm not hurt, I'm just, I'm just tired. So I'm just laying down here, man. Just for a second. Just to capture it all, but yeah, gosh darn it. I fail, but that happens, man, it happens. I don't blame anybody but myself, just dragging my feet. Well, anyway, nice little lay down. Yeah, can we get some water now? All right, man, anyway, safety tip. Always watch your step when you're hiking around, man. If you break a bone, put it down to experience, but don't blame anybody else except yourself. Oh, my goodness.